And today I'm here to talk to you a bit about the future of observability. The world is changing. Nearly every interaction that I have personally with any major brand is now done digitally through their app, through their website. And nearly all organizations are, are grappling with a world where they're competing with even the smallest startups globally. They look the same through the phone and through the app. Uh, whoever's offering the best experience wins in today's marketplace. And yet any customer who gets a bad experience, it's easy to switch. And that's the reality of, of today's competitive landscape is that it's more important than ever that customers receive a first class experience when interacting with any given organization. And yet for a lot of the organizations that they're interacting with, digital was not what they were born in. They were not cloud native, you know, Silicon Valley startups. These are hundred year old companies, 50 year old companies, which are transitioning from an existing stellar business into an online world. And they're having to bridge these best in class experiences between the mobile, the app, the website, email, digital, as well as physical. And so specifically organizations and operations teams worldwide are now having to deal with offering an experience that works great both on premises, in the retail store, with you know the availability and performance that, that's expected of, of a world-class enterprise organization the users now have to experience that in the store. You can go into most retail stores and use their Wi-Fi. The, the experiences that they're offering in the retail stores are often predicated upon having best-in-class infrastructure and applications. And on top of that, that needs to marry seamlessly with the experiences that organizations are offering to their customers over mobile or over the web. And this has been in a never more complex environment for organizations to operate these applications. 68% of applications, according to a survey from Splunk, are, are deployed across both public cloud and on-premises. So organizations are struggling to manage and operate applications at scale with hybrid deployment models, with uh, devices all the way out to the edge and all the way through the data center. And they're reaching for more and more tools in order to help them with that journey. 54% of organizations have eight or more monitoring tools. And that doesn't include the security portfolio as well, where regularly DevOps is releasing new applications and security is, is struggling to keep up. And so we find ourselves in, in a world that is even more difficult to operate than has ever existed before. And that's where kind of our, our legacy approaches of monitoring and understanding customer experience aren't really ready for the, the digital age. Monitoring, existing monitoring approaches were designed to answer questions you already know the answer to, or at least you already know the question to. For example, I can ask my monitoring tool, that server over there, what is its CPU percentage? How much memory is it using? What is its network and disk IO? But I can't ask it, hey, what was Clint's user experience across this application? And so legacy approaches were designed to answer known questions. Observability pivots us to answering questions that we did not expect in advance, being able to look at all the data coming from a particular system and be able to interrogate it and understand emergent complex behaviors that we perhaps didn't anticipate. And in the world post-digital transformation, post-microservices where every organization is a digital organization, we more than ever need to be able to interrogate our systems and understand what fundamentally what's happening to them. Legacy monitoring approaches, every time we bring in a new tool, every time we bring in a new application that needs to be monitored, we suffer with kind of rigid, brittle integrations, things that were very fit for purpose for, I'm going to monitor, you know, JBoss, or I'm going to monitor MySQL, whereas observability systems fundamentally take a very data-centric approach. We're going to bring in metric data. We're going to bring in log data. We're going to bring in trace data. As long as the data fits this particular shape, we can bring in data from any integration, from any application, from any new thing that needs to be observed is a significantly simpler experience in a post-observability world. Legacy monitoring approaches 
were really single system focused. They were they were focused on I have this database or this big server or maybe even a a handful of application servers talking to one big big database server. The shift to distributed systems to microservices have made legacy monitoring approaches completely untenable. They the environment shifts and change rapidly. The tools are not designed to work with large scale distributed systems, the kind of Death Star diagrams that you typically see in most major organizations. Legacy monitoring approaches struggle also to deal with the fidelity of data that's emitted by most operational systems. And so they must summarize or die, aggregate, you know, roll up over time. Modern observability approaches mean being able to take that time scrubber and go back and forth across time, being able to look back from a you know application operations perspective or from a security perspective back in time to be able to get full fidelity data even from a week ago or a month ago or imagine in the case of, of something like a breach investigation wanting to go back to full endpoint logging or full, full network uh, flow logging from six months ago or a year ago to be able to understand a malicious actor moving around in the environment and lastly you know legacy monitoring approaches require generally a completely separate security approach, a very brittle uh, massage view of data that 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 it struggles to maintain security in, in, in that world. And modern observability approaches are secure by default. They're collecting every bit of data. It allows you to go way back in time and be able to turn every bit of data, which is security relevant, uh, into uh, positive outcomes for the business. So the future of observability, we believe looks a little bit different than, than it does today. First of all, it starts with pervasive application instrumentation. You can see this in the industry with the advent of libraries like OpenTelemetry, with even dating back 10 years ago to StatsD type metric instrumentation approaches, moving high fidelity instrumentation into the application to give full visibility of all user behavior, of all security relevant information, egress out of the application. Additionally, that's also high fidelity sources like flow related data or endpoint related data, giving us a full picture of everything that's happening with an application, with an enterprise. Now that deluge of data creates a, a fundamental tension, which is we, we generally can't afford to store all of the data. In fact, something like only 2% of all data created is, is ever stored. And so if we're going to move upstream and start adding massively greater quantities of data, we also need strategic control over that data as the data is moving to put it into the right place, to, to selectively choose what data should go into high performance analytical stores what data should just be thrown into cheap storage from, from an archival perspective, just in case. Uh, data which is security relevant, which should be directed over to the to the SIM or, or other repository for XDR for, for security data. The strategic control point gives us that, that, that ability to route and control and decide what that data is, even at high fidelity, without necessarily making a decision to store it. And additionally, in the future, teams will be able to self-service their way into exploring those data sets. So massive quantities of data available to, to any operational team to go back in time, to use with their own tooling, to be able to do batch analysis of large data sets, to be able to do security investigations across very broad uh, data sets that have been maintained for months or years, and also the ability for teams to self-service into their own tooling. So imagine ML and AI teams being able to self-service out of the uh, out of a repository and be able to run their own models against this data without having to go back to the logging team or the monitoring team and saying, hey, how do I get this data? This is all completely self-service, all stored in open formats, allowing anybody to get value out of this data inside of the organization. So what does an architecture like that look like? So start with, from a sources perspective, all sources should be available. Any existing deployed footprint of agents, that would be things like log shippers and metric agents. This would be legacy protocols like syslog. This would be, or SNMP traps or anything old. This is net new data sources like OpenTelemetry. 
These are streaming data sources like Kafka or Kinesis or, or other types of event streaming platforms. Fundamentally, every source inside the enterprise needs first class protocol support. That data is then brought into an observability pipeline, which, which gives a number of critical functions for the organization. It allows the organization to route that data to any destination. It allows them to reduce that data, which a lot of this data is simply noise and waste. And so the pipeline gives you the ability to easily filter, sample, aggregate, uh, and choose what data fundamentally belongs in, in the destinations of choice. The pipeline also allows you to collect that data. It allows you to reach out to sources like REST APIs and, and other places where the data is, is already at rest and be able to pull that data and bring it to the front of the pipeline. And lastly, it allows you to transform that data and transform that data to parse it, enrich it, work with it before putting it in the destination of choice. And so for a lot of organizations, this pipeline will initially be just simply a pass through. We'll take the data from our existing sources, we'll get it to our existing destinations, but it also allows us to tee that data off and make copies of that data to put the data into multiple locations. One of those locations may be the observability lake where we end up with all the data that doesn't fit in our existing destinations. So obviously the pipeline is giving us an ability to have many, many destinations for this data, to be able to put data that was originally intended for our logging tool also into our SIM or our UEVA tool. But fundamentally, one of the major tensions in observability and security today is I wish I could keep all of the data so I do not have to decide in advance the value of the data, whether this is valuable data or not valuable data. And the lake allows a landing place for all the organization's data where it can be cost effectively stored. That data can then be refined. It can be explored through a new analytics tools, through uh, ML and AI algorithms to go look for trends and patterns across that data. And so the lake gives the ability to easily pull the data back out of the lake and deliver it to any destination later on so that we never lose our full fidelity data that's giving us the, the true visibility of what's happening uh, inside of the organization. And organizations that adopt a next generation observability strategy will receive a, a number of benefits. First of all, increased application visibility to give you the ability to deep dive into a single user's experience into a, one potential malicious actor who's, who's doing something uh, amiss inside of the organization. Having all the full fidelity data gives you the ability to ask and answer any question about what's going on inside of the organization. Secondly, the flexibility and simplicity and control over all of that data makes it to where it's now fundamentally possible to actually employ this type of strategy. It's not like collect all the data is a brand new idea. Fundamentally, we've just not been able to do it before because we did not have the tools available to route that data, to, to sample that data, aggregate that data, make that data cost effective enough to actually make it available across all the SecOps, DevOps, SRE teams, and be able to fundamentally share and visualize that data, give people the ability to work with it anywhere. Now, as for us, I work for Cribble. We sell observability pipeline software, possibly not surprisingly. Uh, we are a quickly growing company backed by phenomenal investors like Sequoia, CRV, Redpoint, uh, Greylock. Uh, and most importantly, we're growing. So please check out our, our website. We have a ton of places where we're hiring. If this is an interesting vision to you, we'd very much like to hear from you. We are, we are growing incredibly rapidly. Our, don't necessarily believe us about the future of observability. These customers and many others that I can't put on a slide are out there doing this all day, every day. And so would strongly encourage you to, uh, to take a look at our references on our website and case studies that show how these types of organizations are getting benefits from an observability pipeline today and starting to employ an observability lake strategy tomorrow. And if you think this is interesting, please check out our sandboxes. It's a great way to get an experience for what our product, which is an observability pipeline, can do for you today. If you believe in pervasive application instrumentation, we have an approach for this as well called AppScope, available at appscope.dev. And all of this is available in the cloud, and you can get started for up to one terabyte a day free today by going to crimble.cloud. Thank you very much.